Good morning, everyone. Um, we are here. It's our first family forum of the school year. I um, hope everyone is doing well. Um, I believe that we're off to a very, very smooth start to the year. Um, I've been here for quite a while now, and I think this is the best start that we've had as far as the schedule, as far as logistics, and just the overall operations and um, transportation, everything has been quite smooth. So we hope that we can keep that momentum going. Um, we're going to go to, so we have, um, I, I'm here, Ms. Lindsay, Dr. Lewis, Ms. Sensi. We're just going to quickly introduce ourselves in order and then we'll get into, you know, some of the nitty gritty and some of the questions that um, some of you posed out there. And I know Ms. Lindsay wants to talk about uh, the school building project later on in the presentation. So Ms. Lindsay, you can take it away. We'll introduce ourselves. Okay, wonderful. It's great to be here with you this morning. We will be recording this, um, so it will go out. So if you have friends or anyone who would like to watch us um, afterwards, we it will be posted on the website and on our Facebook um, page too. So my name is Ellen Lindsay. I am the executive director here at AMSA. I came to the school in 2015 as a school counselor and then um, changed positions along the way. And I've been the executive director since March of 2019. Uh, I love the school. I absolutely adore your children. And, um, and really, it's so rewarding to work with them and to work with the staff and the teachers. Um, it's definitely my favorite thing to do is to see those kids and happy faces in the morning. So um, that is uh, my, my role generally this year um, is the building project, which Mike mentioned, and I'm going to talk to you about a little bit at the end and the capital campaign, because we're, we're working to raise um, $2 million over the next couple of years uh, to be invested into that new academic building that we're, that we're creating. So um, that's me. I'm, I'm excited to be here and to see all of you. And I agree with Mike. This is Gee, this is definitely the best start of a school year that I've seen. I think so many of us are so grateful that it feels so much more like it did back in 2018 and 19, um, that people are just really happy to be back. And um, it just, I, maybe maybe it's, it's a point in our lives where we're not taking anything for granted. And I keep thinking, I'm just going to enjoy every moment of it. Um, enjoy your kids and enjoy um, the EMSA community. All right. Howdy. I am Anders Lewis. Uh, I have been here for quite some time since 2005. Um, really excited to be coming back. Uh, a hearty welcome if you're a new parent. Um, thank you for coming to AMSA. If you are a returning parent, thank you for returning too. Uh, we're really excited about the year. I'm excited about this year. Um, and uh, every year I've been here, I've, I just uh, view it as a great opportunity to continue the mission of our school. And the mission of our school is that each and every child, uh, every single student that walks through our doors, uh, regardless of background, where they come from, is capable of excelling in all subjects. That's what brought me here to AMSA. That's what keeps me coming here to AMSA. That vision, that hope, that inspiration uh, that all of the kids, all of your kids uh, are capable of excelling in all subjects. And we're going to work as hard as we can to make that possible. Um, so please, throughout the year, whenever you have any questions, whenever you have any concerns, um, let us know. Reach out to us. We try to be very responsive um, and to build a good relationship with each of you. So really happy to be here. Thanks for coming and look forward to a good conversation. All right, thanks, Anders. So uh, again, my name is Mike Naraki. I'm the principal here at AMSA. This is my 14th school year here, which is very, very hard to believe. Uh, it's funny talking to you know sixth, seventh, uh, some of the eighth graders. I was here before, um, well, for sixth and seventh grade especially, before some of them or w while some of them were born. Uh, been here for quite a while now. Uh, so my responsibility here. Um, well, I guess just to start off, I started out here as a special education teacher and then became the dean of students back in 2011, end of 2011. Um, 
And I was the dean of students here at the school for about six or seven years, then became vice principal, then principal in March of 2019, at the same time when um, Ms. Lindsay was named the executive director. Uh, I absolutely love the school. Uh, I'm a Marlboro person, born and raised in Marlboro. So um, those, of you, those of you who are here probably already know, veteran parents probably already know that. But if you're a brand new parent, um, you know, I'm very well aware of Marlboro, Hudson, Maynard, Clinton communities and all the surrounding communities as well. I've uh, been around here for pretty much my entire life. Um, my day-to-day -day, you know, responsibilities really re revolves around the day-to-day -day operations of the school. So everything from the moment 7.25 a.m. hits until 2.45 p.m., everything that happens uh, leading up to the start of the school day and all the way to the end and even after school, um, you know, I have to have a pulse on all of that. And I have a great team of people. Um, we have a great administrative team that specializes in all those different areas. But, you know, I'm sort of that oversight. Um, I'm always willing to hear feedback from the community. This is one of the reasons why we have these family forums is to kind of update folks and then offer people the opportunity to ask questions and, um, you know, offer clarification on topics that you all need. Um, Student-wise, I do have a principal's council of students. I have 18 or 19 students uh, across grades 10, 11, and 12 that I will meet with uh, twice a month. And I also, you know, that's part of, again, feedback from the community. Our students um, are our number one customers, and I want to make sure that they're having a great um, experience here at the school. So I like to meet with those veteran students. Uh, and they reflect back on their time as lower school students and on their current uh, time here as high school students and uh, gather information from them and make sure that we're operating at a, uh, at a smooth level and um, providing everyone here with an educational environment that is uh, fun, social, and um, challenging and, um, you know, and just a rich experience overall. So that's sort of what... Um, Sort of a little bit about me, I guess. I'll stop there. I'll pass it over to Ms. Sensi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Amanda Sensi. I am the vice principal here at AMSA. It is my second year here at AMSA. Um, I would like to piggyback off of Ms. Lindsay just saying I feel like this opening of the school year was, you know, very smooth in comparison to last year, but also could have been it was my first year. And now I'm feeling like I've got... Um, kind of things more settled. I'm super excited that we've started the year, you know, as normal as we possibly can since last year. Um, I believe we were in masks up until March. So um, it was still a very challenging school year last year. So I'm excited um, to get things kicked off. Uh, it's my second year here at AMSA, but actually 15 total years in education. I was a math teacher before this. I taught middle school and high school math. So AMSA, you know, always seemed like a great fit for me. My day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities, I help Mike a lot with the operations of the school. Again, we work hand-in-hand -hand from the moment we open the doors in the morning till the moment we close and we end out at dismissal outside. But one of my main responsibilities is really student life. I have a few slides about that today. Uh, clubs, all the activities that we do, the events, the field trips, the dances, the proms. Um, I also run student government, and that meets um, every two weeks on a bi-weekly basis. And so I really have a, a big pulse on what's going on with the students and the student body. And I have a lot to share with that in our presentation this morning. So that's that. All right, I think I have the first slide here. So this is just general updates. Um, hopefully everyone has seen the email. Uh, we sent an email out recently, I'm sure. Uh, more friendly reminders will be coming out soon. We have we are going to run two back to school nights this year for our parents and guardians. Um, traditionally, we used to run three different nights. We've narrowed that down to two. We are confident that that will work out. Uh, we will see. So uh, September fourteenth, you can see we have the lower school, and September twentieth, the high school back to school night. Please read through the email that we sent out. Again, reminders will come out. It's just really a great opportunity to come in. Uh, you'll, you'll run through your child's schedule, their day one schedule. You'll go through all eight classes. Classes are scheduled for 10 minutes. 
I think there's a three minute transition time. So you'll need to hustle to each class. Um, we'll have student volunteers set up around the buildings and outside to make sure everyone can find their room locations. Um, it's just a great opportunity to get a brief introduction uh, from your child's uh, classroom teachers uh, on how the classroom will operate, how their particular course or subject will operate throughout the year. It's always a great night and we're looking forward. You know, last year there were some restrictions. We only allowed one parent or guardian, um, things of that nature. And we are completely wide open this time. We'll have capital campaign information and tables set up. Uh, Ellen, again, Miss Lindsay, we'll get into that later. Uh, also, I believe we're going to have tables set up uh, from Miss Sensi and her crew of club advisors on uh, club information and student interest clubs and things of that nature. So it'll be full of information. Our PTO is always around on the back to school nights as well to help out and to um, offer their support and any other upcoming initiatives that they're working on. So please mark those dates on your calendar. Let me go to the next one, Amanda. I'll take this as well. September 21st, just a reminder, that's our first half day of the year. Half days, I had some parents eat, reach out to me recently about spirit wear days. Every scheduled half day throughout the entire school year is an AMSA spirit wear day. So students, if they have AMSA spirit wear, that's, you know, um, has the, I don't have a shirt on right now, but uh, has the Eagle logo, or if it's a AMSA, you know, sports jersey, AMSA hoodie, hooded sweatshirt, what have you. Those are the days where they can wear um, those tops, whether it's a sweatshirt, long sleeve shirt, um, et cetera. Those are always fun. We're looking forward to that. And our staff has a professional development that afternoon. October 7th is a new date. We had to switch the photo day. Photo day was originally scheduled in September during Spirit Week. So we shifted that uh, so that students could fully dress to the themes that week. So October 7th uh, will be photo day. Reminder that there's no school on October 10th. Uh, we have the PSATs coming up for grades 9, 10, and 11. We do that traditionally on campus here during school hours. We usually have a special schedule that day. All of the low for and it will apply to lower school and upper school students. Uh, and we will have all of that information fully available. Um, and students in the lower school will have um, an opportunity to go through their schedule with their directed study teachers as well for those days. There's just a slight, uh, slight tweaking that we make to the schedule on the PSAT day. And then October 26th, another half day scheduled. Same thing, spirit wear day for the students and staff will be here in the afternoon uh, working on our professional development program. Uh, Mike, I just want to add for um, those of those of you that are new to AMSA, the spirit wear days, um, it's the spirit wear top and then a uniform bottom. So they're still wearing whichever uniform bottom they have for that day, whether it be khakis or their athletic uh, pants or shorts, but the spirit wear top. Yeah, and we send out information leading up to those days, specifying that information as well. So it should be very clear. So I'll go ahead and take this. Um, I, I wanted to showcase some of our new traditions that we started um, with our seniors. And one of those uh, was the rock painting. So this kind of stemmed out of last year's seniors really wanting to do something more in our campus. We now own our buildings where before we were tenants. So we did have some restrictions on what we could do. And I know our goal as administration is really trying to make this campus come more to life and feel more like a school. And so our students went ahead and they painted their seven or eight really large rocks, boulders um, on campus. They organized this day. Uh, it was open to all the seniors and they came and really they had an awesome time and it came out so it came out so nice. The seniors, each grade has a different color associated with them. So you'll notice while you're on campus that these paintings are all done in purple because that's their senior color. And so um, similarly, we had also let them paint their parking lot. And I think this came out so great. Again, organized by the senior reps and the president of our senior class. And they got all the students together, anyone that wanted to come out. They had their class advisors there overseeing everything, chaperoning. We had PTO 
um, graciously donated the paint and the supplies. So it really was a real big team effort. Again, you'll see a lot of purple since that's their class color. And if you drive down the strip, it says um, 2024, excuse me, 2023 legends. So their whole kind of motto is legends. So they had a great time. These are all new traditions and things that you know, Mike and I are really open to talking with the students about what they'd like to do as they get to be seniors. If this is something that sticks and each senior class wants to go ahead and paint a section of our campus. Um, we also made this particular parking lot that you're looking at for seniors only. That was a big change from last year. Um, and so it kind of gives those seniors that, that extra little privilege and they are really enjoying this. So the last um, new tradition that I'd like to talk about, and again, this came from the students directly. The seniors really felt like they wanted to do something that was very bonding where they could start the year together as a whole grade and then end the year. Unfortunately, it was supposed to be this past Tuesday morning, but with the rain, they had to, they had to um, cancel. So they have rescheduled this for this Friday morning. And so as a grade, they're all invited to meet on campus in their newly painted parking lot. Again, PTO has graciously offered to bring in coffee and donuts, and they're going to meet with their class advisors that will be chaperoned, and they'll watch the sunrise together. And then at the end of the year, something very similar will be set up where they'll watch the sunset together. And this, again, was really driven from the students. I was so impressed with them. They're really trying to find ways to come together as a grade and, and really end on a solid, positive note at AMSA. And I really can't wait to see how this all works out. It's awesome. So those are just um, some updates for me. We're gonna head over to the questions that were submitted from the community. We allowed um, questions to be submitted up until yesterday afternoon. And so these are just going to address some of the themes that we saw. And again, I'll stick with this first slide just because it is still all about student life. We did get a couple questions asking if field trips are coming back. Yes, they are returning. So we are back to field trips. Um, if you remember last year, again, we still had a lot of COVID restrictions. We were in masks until I believe March. So as a school, we felt that field trips were not something that we felt safe to do. This year, we are going to move forward with field trips. You'll see that the lower school grades six, seven, and eight, they have two class trips. So that's a school, like a class-wide trip that their class advisors will organize. So some of those could be, an example would be Canopy Lake Park or Wachusett Mountain. So those are the big class trips. Those will come out as we're ready to roll them out. So you'll be hearing more information on those soon. Uh, the seniors traditionally also have two class trips. They have a senior picnic, which will be sometime this fall. We're just finalizing those details. So um, they have a senior picnic and then they also have the New York City trip option as well. And then the upper school grades 9, 10, 11, they have one class trip. So again, those are all coordinated by the class advisors. And it, at the upper school level, there are Google classrooms that go with their grade. So the class of 2023 has a Google classroom, which your students should be part of class of 2024. Lots of information gets pumped out through there. And again, those are all run by the class advisors. Those are staff members here at AMSA. Some questions that came through about Spirit Week. Spirit Week is coming up September 26th to the 30th. I met with student government yesterday and they are working on finalizing the themes for that week. So what happens that week is uh, we put out the themes, whether it be a tropical day, a pajama day, um, an 80s day, whatever that day is, we put the themes out. And if students would like to participate in those themes, they pay a dollar for our dress down day. That, that kind of goes hand in hand with how our dress down days work. This year, the student government really wanted to make sure the whole student body was involved in this decision making. So they've put out a survey to the entire student body asking the students to choose what themes and they're kind of voting. So right now we're in the voting process and they're gonna vote their top um, four or five themes and then we'll release that out to the community. Something new this year is a winter spirit week and a spring spirit week. So we're offering three spirit weeks in total and those dates are gonna be determined soon. I will get those out to the community as soon as we have them solid and locked in. Um, again, really just trying to get back to some, our get back to some of our traditions and um, those will all be again, clothing theme based. 
um, things of that nature. We also will end our fall spirit week with our homecoming dance, and that is scheduled for Saturday, October 1st. I really let the students this year, again, for student government, they run homecoming. And so I asked them to find the venue and they've been working together as a team, mostly the seniors. The seniors are going out, finding the venues, they're contacting the locations, um, deciding if it's gonna be big enough for us, all that. So it's a great leadership opportunity for them to go out and pick and figure out this venue. We're very close to getting this finalized. And as soon as it is, we will pump out all of our flyers and advertisements. So that will be coming out very shortly. And then the same with prom. Um, again, we're just, we're very close on finalizing that date and location. We did get some questions, you know, I know last year prom was over Memorial Day weekend. That will not be happening again. Um, so no worries about that. It will happen, you know, in the middle of May. Again, we're just, we're very close to finalizing that as soon as it's done all the information will come out about prom. So lots of student life updates. And Mike, I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, so again, these are questions, uh, these are themes um, of the questions that we received, the questions that were submitted through the invitation to this, to this family forum. There were some questions around our lunch program and why the school is not offering free lunches uh, across the board. Uh, you know, we do have a just we just want to let everybody know that we do have a free and re free or reduced lunch program. Um, though that paperwork that that all is processed through our uh, finance office. So you'd want to contact um, Leanna McLaren, who's our uh, financial. Um, operations manager, I think is your title now. I might have that wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Ellen. Um, but the you know, question did pop up about lunch. So if you have questions around that, you definitely want to reach out to our business office. And again, her name is Leanna McLaren. You can find that name on our website and you could email directly from our site directory. Uh, lower school lunch procedures. I think there was one question that was submitted around uh, I think it was silent, like sometimes there were silent lunches last year based on, uh, you know, student behavior in the cafeteria. Um, I That's something that our Dean of Students, uh, Anthony Montesian, he oversees the lunch uh, procedures and operations down there each day and works with a team of lunch monitors and then teachers who have lunch duty. Uh, I think that they only use those in very rare, rare cases where it's determined that the pretty much the entire cafeteria is not following the expectations and procedures that are outlined and clearly specified to the students at the beginning of the year. I think very rarely they use those. Um, we don't want to use those. I don't think there's a plan to use those um, unless it's absolutely warranted. Uh, so I am speaking on behalf of Mr. Montesian here, but um, I think that he would probably say the same sort of thing. Uh, but I did want to address, we did want to address that question. Uh, some concerns came in and we've heard them um, at the board level as well. The parent represent, representative to the board of trustees mentioned this at a recent meeting. And we are uh, planning to actually meet with Laura Burgess, who is your parent representative, uh, to discuss the land's end concerns and some potential uh, solutions to that. So we are looking to... Um, collaborate for sure on um, how we can, you know, address this situation. So please know that that's, that's on the table. We're definitely um, in the process of looking into that. There was a question in general around emergencies. And uh, I think it was only one question just around like, what do we do if there's an emergency off campus, like at a family's household or something they need to get in touch with their child, or if, you know, they want, just if they want to get in touch with their child in general, uh, over an urgent um, matter, and you can always call our main office line. That will go to uh, the front desk here at the school. We have three different front desks, but it'll go to either the lower school or the um, upper school front desk receptionist, and uh, you can call them directly. Just call our main office line, and um, it will go through to the front desk here. So please always keep that in mind. And on the flip side of that, if students have anything going on, um, you know, if there's something going on in class and they notify a teacher, 
you know, teachers will let them leave the room if they need to make a phone call. We just ask that they make the phone call at the front desk here. We have phones available for the students to, to use in the front desk areas. Uh, and then student, oh, so there was a, stu a question that popped up around uh, student uh, surveys, identification surveys that some of our teachers um, utilize this year through, um, through Google Forms electronically. Now, it, it's a traditional practice here at AMSA, and I think at many other schools. I even remember back when I was in school, um, it was more pencil and paper back in the day, where it was common for uh, some teachers to pass out index cards, for example, and ask students, you know, what, you know, what name would you like to be called? Which name would you like to be called? For example, my name's Michael, but I like to be called Mike. Um, those sorts of questions are asked by teachers here, and I think it probably schools all over the country. Uh, some teachers decide to um, offer that opportunity for students to inform their teacher of, you know, the name that they'd like to go by. So something did go out like that in some of our classrooms. Um, and there was a, it was through a Google form. So the students were asked, what's your name? Like, as it appears on the roster, and then what, you know, what would you like to be called in class? And then there were other options that were not mandatory for students to fill out if they um, prefer to go by a different pronoun or be called uh, by a certain pronoun, things of that nature. Um, that was an option for students, but not mandatory. So I know that there was one uh, question or con concern about that, uh, but that's, that's the process that we went through. Um, if you have any specific questions about that whole operation, we do have a um, DEI coordinator, Mr. Pru. Peter Pro, you can always reach out to him if you had any questions about that. He he brought the survey into our staff meeting uh, during our welcome back week when it was just when it was staff only. He introduced this tool for teachers to you know opt they could opt to use it or not. Um, and he actually learned of this method um, using Google Forms and making it electronic from a connections conference that he was at with multiple school districts across Massachusetts. Um, it was hosted at Sutton High School. And um, so that's sort of where it stemmed from. It's not an AMSA specific sort of tool. Um, and again, it is something that's traditionally been around, I feel for quite a while. Um, it's just different now that it's in an electronic format rather than pencil and paper and on an index card. It's just a way for teachers to um, promote community in their classroom and give students the opportunity to feel safe. And if they want to be called a different name, um, then it appears on the class roster, they can inform their teacher that way. And, you know, sometimes teachers ask other questions like, what, what are your interests outside of school? What are your hobbies? Do you play any sports? Are you in any clubs at the school? It's just along those sort of same, um, same guidelines there. So I did just want to clarify that piece. I don't know if there's anything else in the next slide, Ms. Sensi, that, nope, we're going to the campus map. <laughs> no, there's no other um, questions submitted, but um, you know, families are welcome to submit anything in the chat. They have any more questions. Those are just the themes and the questions that were submitted ahead of time prior to this meeting. But if there's anything else, feel free to throw it in the chat and we can kind of respond to you as they come. And then I believe Ms. Lindsay is going to take it away. Miss Lindsay, sorry, I just want to add one more thing just to the questions in general. Some of these questions, I hope everyone knows out there listening, if you ever have a question that you don't have to wait for family forums um, either, I want you all to understand you could you could um, email uh, email the school at any time, whoever the appropriate person would be. Um, we do have a section on our website for frequently asked questions and it gives you some sort of guidance on who you would who may be the right person to contact. Um, so please don't feel like you need to wait for, you know, a month or two or three to have something answered. You can always reach out at any time. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. We're all here for you and for your children. Um, I, I just, I, I feel that I'm just kind of excited by the way the school started off and the question about silent lunches. You know, we definitely had behavior issues. I think it was a really big adjustment last year for um, the kids to come back to school and and for all the staff, honestly, as well. There was a lot of behavior things um, that we were addressing last year. And this year has been, you know, we always say smooth as butter. Um, it has really, really gone well. And and I would, you know, I, I attribute that to, to a lot of different things that life is just getting back to normal. 
Um, but Mike and, and Amanda have done such a fantastic job um, organizing the start of the school year and making sure that we were ready and implementing, um, you know, new processes and new activities and things for the kids. You know, when we're, you're looking at the list of all these startup activities and plans, um, it just feels so, so good. Um, and it's exciting and it's wonderful to to see the kids looking forward to things and participating in things. So please encourage your students to, to look into the clubs. Um, Amanda was just talking this morning about having club information um, up here during parent nights. You know, get your kids involved in those things. In the sports program, we have an amazing sports program. They can reach out to Pete Jones. Um, and there's financial aid available for all those things if your if your family um, needs needs help. So we are we're really excited to to kick off this school year. It just feels like um, for those of you, I see some of our parents on here who have been around for a long time. Um, you know, AMSA has come a, a long, long way in in the last uh, half dozen years, and we've worked so much to put supports in place for students. To, to you know, AMSA at one point was was so so focused on academics, which we still are, but there weren't the supports in place that really needed to be there. Um, and it feels like all of that and the social aspect um, just are all pulling together now. Um, and uh, I'm 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 just so proud of my team um, and the the amazing work they do, their dedication. Uh, to this school and to our families and to your children. So, um, okay, so that's that. We have other exciting projects going on as well. And you can see right here, this this um, proposed map. So if you're looking um, at AMSA, the, the large white rectangle on the side, that would be four kicks just to kind of orient yourself. Um, and we are in the process of um, building and designing a new academic building. Uh, so I will say for those parents who've been around for a while and they're saying, for crying out loud, Ellen, you've been talking about this for a year. Where the heck is it? And why haven't you broken ground yet? Um, I would I would say that it's been a much longer process than we had hoped. It's been um, much more expensive um, than we had hoped. And I think when we really started planning all of this, it was kind of pre-COVID. Um, and we really thought that that we would be able to easily put a building together um, for $200 a square foot. And now it's about $600 a square foot. So that's a big change. And so that means that we've really had to change what our focus um, has been for this, this building. Uh, because originally, for those of you who have been around for, for a couple of years, we, we've talked about we were building out the third and fourth floor of this 165 building that you see. Um, we were have, going to have a big gymnasium where the proposed academic building is. And what we've discovered over time um, is that the 165 building isn't, we can't really build that out due to codes, um, coding issues and getting students up on the third and fourth floor. Um, it has to do with seismic coding and fire coding. And the cost would be to bring the building up to code on those floors would cost more than the actual build out. Um, and so we have, uh, for now, uh, set that aside. We will continue to, to work on the entrance is going to be moved over by the 165 building. You'll, you will not, once the campus changes, you will not be coming in towards four kicks. You'll actually leave through four kicks. So you'll enter by the far, on the far right hand side by the 165 building. The road will go all the way behind the 199 building and then you will come out, um, by four kicks. Uh, students will still have access to the parking in front. What you're seeing here, these red lines, this is just a, photo, a, a picture uh, that, I, that I just happen to have where proposing to the city um, what options we, we have for emergency vehicles. So that's just a way that the architects say, well, a fire engine is about this wide. Um, and, and that's one of, the, one of the proposals that we have for emergency vehicles. Um, and I just happened to use this photo. But you can see, so uh, for those of you who've been around for a while, we bought the 165 building about like uh, four and a half years ago now. 
And then we, the 201 building and the 199 building, we just bought those last October 20th. So we haven't even owned those for a year yet. Uh, and the new building is going to, that's proposed, as you can see, proposed academic building down here on the bottom. That's going to be um, 10 classrooms. Five of those are going to be science labs. They will be two physics labs, two chemistry labs, a biology lab, full-size labs. And the second biology lab will be, we're, we're converting the chemistry lab in the 199 building um, into another bio lab. So there'll be two labs, um, big, beautiful labs, 1,100 square, foot, 1100 square feet or so um, on each of those labs. Um, and it is absolutely actually amazing what our science teachers have done with the spaces that they have. Um, if you come in sometime for parent night, notice the size of these rooms. Um, so yeah, Amanda's just changed changed this. This is what the academic building is going to be. These are concept drawings. They're working on schematic drawings, which will be more final. Um, but you can see this building is 17,000 square feet. This would be the front uh, entrance. You'd enter here where it says East Entry. Um, side and there is uh, four classrooms down there and then there's one biology lab with storage and prep space and all there's also an admin entry area there this will have a nice glass um, entryway and the classrooms that 750 square foot classroom on the bottom for those of you who have been in the 165 building that are known as the white building it's the big white building on your on your right as you come in um, all those classrooms are about 750 square feet, just to kind of get a visual in your mind. Some of them in the upper school and the lower school building are 500 square feet. So this is these are going to be considerably bigger, nice, you know, no poles in the middle of these classrooms. And then the three um, up towards the top of the screen are all 780 square feet. Um, and then that biology lab is 1,100 square feet. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful space. Now, one of the reasons... Um, in, in school buildings, there has to be bathrooms on each floor. These bathrooms um, will accommodate this floor, but they'll also accommodate eventually a gymnasium. Um, and you'll see the proposed photo um, on the last, this one here, you can see where eventually this future gym will be. Due to the cost of everything, we can't afford to put up that gymnasium right now. If you have, happen to know anyone who might have about $10 million to donate this school, we could do the gymnasium now, but we, we won't be able to do it yet. But what these bathrooms that you can see on the next picture, you will see um, they would support the gymnasium. So we're trying to reduce costs so that we can have as big of a gymnasium as we need um, for our program. We can flip down one more. So, uh, so on that bottom floor, I mean, I just go one up you can see that we're already planning for those to support that new gymnasium building uh, by what's on this floor here. Okay, next one down. Thank you. All right, and so here are the, um, the science labs. These are the two physics labs, they're side by side. And then we have two chemistry labs and then one more 700 square foot uh, lab here as well with, with the restrooms on the top. Um, this this building has it, once again has changed many times, all due to cost. Uh, at one point, it was twenty two thousand square feet. It was about fourteen classrooms, um, but once again, due to cost, unfortunately, it's been reduced to seventeen thousand square feet. But it's ten classrooms that we don't have now. It's ten classrooms and beautiful lab spaces that your children deserve. Um, as I said, we've done amazing things with very, very inadequate facilities. Our kids are top in the state in science and math, and I know you're aware of that. But what our kids are, are going to be able to achieve and what our teachers are going to be able to use these spaces for is going to be life changing for AMSA and for your children. Um, and so we're, Amanda, you can go to the next one. We are in the process of raising money. And so uh, over the next couple of years, we will be um, looking to raise at least $2 million. And if we find someone who really wants to invest in our school or multiple people who are willing to have buildings named after them or whatever they need to help us to get these facilities where they need to be for our kids, um, we, um, 
we're looking for for folks to donate companies private folks um, community donations local businesses grants um, some of the companies that you or someone in your family work for um, and there's applications for from foundations associated with those companies please let us know uh, in fact we were just invited to apply to uh, tjx so that is um, we're working on all of those all of those things so the Capital Campaign Committee, I've got a wonderful group of folks working on the Capital Campaign Committee. See a couple of them here with us this morning, so welcome. And uh, they are all working working really hard to, to reach out into the community um, and to introduce our school to people and to show them what we have to offer and who our kids are and, and where, we need, where we need help. And so um, we have this, these, you can put these, um, these up on this uh, slides up on the website, but this capital campaign, uh, that's the website right there. There's QR codes to make donations. Um, as you drive in, we have, if, if you come onto campus, you'll see the big banner. That banner, there's a QR code on that. That QR code will take you to the capital campaign page where you can make a donation. Um, we also have a buy a brick program that we're excited about. A four by eight brick um, is $100, $250 for an eight by eight brick. And you can um, design the brick with different um, like logos on it, whether it's a sports thing or a diploma from your child, class of 2023 with your child's name on it, your family's name. Um, and we will be running that brick program at least through this um, entire school year. So we're very excited. The more money we're able to raise, the more we will be able to do. Um, while we're waiting for the gymnasium to be um, built, those um, that area, that ground area will be leveled and there'll be 30 temporary parking spaces added there because the idea would be once we build the gymnasium, we would also extend the front parking lot. So it's more of the size of four kicks. Uh, that would add extra spaces there. But in the meantime, until we're able to build that gymnasium, There'll be about 30 more spaces there. Um, and if you know anyone, please let us know. There's also a referral link um, on the Capital Campaign campaign page where you could click and say, I work for such and such company. They have matching funds. Um, there's usually a process that we have to go through in order to have us on a uh, matching fund list if we're not already there. Um, all money raised is going through um, the, uh, we have a foundation that supports the school. It's called STEM Soaring Eagles Foundation. You can also um, put uh, that down as a, as a preference if you use Amazon um, to send you know, a percentage of, of what you purchase to the school also as a donation. Um, and we're, we're just super excited. We have a great committee and uh, we're working with the development committee that's also part of um, the board of trustees. So. It's um, everyone's on the same page. We're all excited. We will be up here. We will have a table um, on the back to school nights. So any questions that I can answer about that, I'd be happy to do so. Is that the last one, Amanda? I think so. Yeah, that is our last slide. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I know there's a couple of questions being submitted into the into the chat. So if there's anything else, I suppose we can wait a few minutes to see. I know the last question that just came in was regarding seniors and um, senior privilege. So seniors um, do have a senior privilege as long as their parents have signed their permission slip. And that permission slip is stating that you are giving AMSA the right to let that student leave campus. Um, seniors have a, a QR code um, that they use to sign out of the buildings. And once they sign out of the buildings, there there's some legal you know, things attached to that as well. They're signing out of the buildings, which is legally saying that AMPS is not responsible for those students at that time as they're signed out. Um, so we do ask that they leave campus. Mm -hmm. They're not sitting in their cars on the parking lot. So they're going and hanging out at four kicks. Um, legally, they're saying they're not here at our school. And so we're not responsible for them during that time. And then they come back onto campus and they go to their class, their scheduled classes. It would be awesome to have a lounge or like some areas where kids can hang out, but just due to our campus right now, where where we're at, 
um, we, we don't have that space. Um, one other thought that just popped into my mind when someone asked a question about the new phone system, which there's certainly some growing pains on that. But one of the most amazing things about this, this system um, and why it's important, first, first of all, our old system was 25 years old. It belonged to the buildings originally. Um, and this new system, if we call 911, um, it automatically tells 911 where the call is coming from, which classroom or which hallway, um, and they can pinpoint exactly where help needs to, to go. We have a confusing campus with three buildings, soon to be four buildings, um, and that is very, very important. Um, so we, we know that it hasn't been easy, but we are um, continuing to work with it and, and it's better. So um, it's just, I think, a matter of time till we all get used to it. The other thing that we added this summer too, which I think you'll be pleased to hear about, is a brand new security system, um, a camera system. And these cameras are everywhere on campus now. There used to be a lot of spaces where we didn't have cameras and the quality was very, very grainy. Um, but these things are absolutely beautiful. We can get pictures on our cell phones. The deans can, can watch things live on their phones. Um, the receptionists can see it all live. And um, I, I, I feel so much better knowing that, that, it's, that those are there as well. Um, one of the other things too on the campus map, you probably notice where that building is. It's like, okay, that, that building is right there and it's being really put there on purpose. It's, we need to close up the center of this campus for a lot of reasons. Parents over the years have talked about the security. Um, our, our biggest concern has always been the safety of that, right? As we're circling through and kids are trying to, to um, pass between classes and whatnot. So um, that is something where I'm very, very happy about that we'll be able to close up that campus um, and keep your kids safe. And they'll be able to, they'll be more of a, like a walking path area. Eventually uh, all new landscaping as well, um, but we don't have the money for that right yet. Uh, question on dress down days? Yes, we are going to be communicating out um, shortly regarding dress down days. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, We're, we are going to let them if they want to, to pay for the whole year at a time again. We just met with our business manager yesterday about dress down days. So, yes, it's the same process as the last several years. So, some families want to, they can uh, purchase everything ahead of time and they'll have those bracelets available for the students to wear just to show um, that they paid. Next. Or you could just bring in cash uh, throughout, the, throughout the year on those particular days. And it's a dollar for every dress down days. And our dress down days are on the last Friday um, that we have school each month and also during the spirit weeks. So there's three spirit weeks this year. So that's in addition to what, kind of what we used to do. Um, all that information is there's always reminders sent out to the community leading up to all the dress down days and the spirit wear days. And Ms. Cincy, probably some of our newer parents are saying, why are they collecting money on for dress down days? What do we sure. do with that money? Sure. So um, the money does get put aside for each, um, like for the high school grades, it gets put aside and we save that up until they graduate. So those funds go towards graduations, towards the cap and gowns, towards reserving the space, all the expenses that go along with graduation. It offsets that cost. So that's what we're putting those dress down day monies towards. It's offsetting the cost of graduation and really any of the senior events. So as your children pay throughout each of the years, then once they become a senior, there's all that money there for that grade. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you all for your time. We'll year. see you all around. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing your kids with us. We yes, appreciate absolutely. it. Thank you. Thank you.